How would I help you with construction? Here's a scene from a Tex Avery cartoon called Heckling Harry. And it has a really cool drawing by Rod Scribner. That's the animator. When you first look at a drawing like this, it looks very detailed. And it is detailed. There are a lot of wrinkles, a lot of tricky forms. But if we break it down using construction, um, we can kind of figure out the logic behind all the details. So I'm going to show you. Step one. So step one is you look at the drawing and you measure off the proportions. The head is a good unit of proportion. One, two, about two and two thirds. So then I copy that. One, two, and two thirds. Now that I have the proportions, I draw in the basic forms around those proportions. And I draw them three-dimensionally. Bugs' head is basically an egg shape. So put that in there. The dog also has an egg-shaped skull here. And he has a muzzle. Now notice the direction of everything. Their heads are tilted towards each other. There's a tilt there. There's a tilt there. So I drew in a, line, a straight line, and I put my eggs around the tilts. Now the heads are aimed at each other. The dog's a little bit higher than Bugs. His muzzle is on a different angle than his head. The head is tilted towards Bugs. The muzzle's tilted a little bit towards us. So notice the center line in the middle of the head is on a different angle between the muzzle and the head. Now I'm ready to start adding the second level of uh, breakdowns of construction. That's step one. Here's step two. Now I'm going to just redraw this for a second to make it make the concept simple. Now Bugs' head tilted towards the dog. So his neck coming down here. His body like that. Okay. That's the basic construction of Bugs in its simplest form. But now we're going to break him into his next levels of sizes. This is a little bit hard to um, put into words. But he's ba he made up of three basic forms here. One, two, three in this drawing. Then each of these forms is again broken up into separate pieces. His head is made up of two pieces. The cranium and the muzzle area. His jaw. Same with the dog. See cranium? Jaw, nose. So, notice that his muzzle is smaller than his cranium in this position. Partly because it is smaller and partly because his head is tilted down a little bit. So, part two of his head, I'm putting a center line through the head. And then on top of that, I'm going to place his muzzle. muzzle on one side, there's the muzzle on the other side. So that is step two. It's the second level of forms. The first level was one, two, three. Head, neck, body. Then the head is broken up into one, two. Skull, muzzle. Got that? So if we go back to step one, here's my construction of the basic forms of the picture. Here's step two, broken down a little bit. Now I added the nose, Bugs' nose here. Now notice that I'm not drawing. This is important. I'm not trying to draw one thing at a time and hoping that I end up with a good looking picture. This is how most people, when, they're, when they teach themselves how to draw, they try to do it a little bit at a time, detail by detail. And that's a much harder way to get a good picture. Now, 
I'm sort of a little bit able to do this because I understand construction. I understand, when I look at this, I understand how it's built, how it works. So I can sort of get away with a little bit of this, but it's still not going to be as good a picture as if I constructed it. But this is a bad way to draw, detail by de detail. So it won't add up. Don't draw like that. That's step two. Let's try to figure out Bugs' expression. All right, say it in words. He's got one eye squished, closed, and one eye opened. He also has his cheek. This whole side of his face here, the cheek and the eye, are squashed, while this side of his face are squeezed. So now we have to draw that, and we don't want to draw all the details, we just want to get the basic expression. So the basic expression is between the eyes and the mouth. So this eye is stretched. This eye is squashed. And the eyebrows are helping with that. Teeth clenched over here. Now note the top, top of his mouth and his cheek together make a form. They don't, these two lines don't exist by themselves. They're related to each other. The top of your, the top of your mouth and your cheek are all one mass of meat that you can squash or you can stretch it. That's how it works in cartoons, too. Just like your real head. So I've got the basic expression now. One, one squinty eye, one stretched eye. So now I have to build it up. Now this eye, notice that the squinty eye is actually an S-curve there. Like that. And also notice that there is a line above it and a line below it. Those two together actually make the eye shape. So that is like that. So we add the eyebrow and the eyebrow on this side is partly covering up the top of Bugs's eye. Is that starting to make sense? His nose here sticks out from his face. So the center line of his nose is not the same center line as his head. It's a little bit forward of his head. So now I can add slight details. Teeth. Before you draw each tooth, draw the overall shape. Then break it into two. See how it's starting to make sense? Each layer of details is laid onto the, the larger shape underneath it. Okay, there's more details in his head. But the rest of the details follow the major forms that are there. You can see that there are extra uh, brow furrows above his eyebrow. Well, those obey the physics of the main eyebrow. Here's your main eyebrow. That's the one that tells you the expression. And the other ones basically follow it, but also notice that they're not parallel lines. They generally follow each other. So 
Same thing with this. Got one, two. All of these lines wrap around the forms of the head. Like he's got three hairs, but before we draw three hairs, let's look at the overall shape of the hairs. And, where the, and they come from the center line of his head. Now you can split it up into three. So you draw the general shape first, and then you fill it in. Okay, now he's got more lines and wrinkles over here. Now what are they? This is part of his cheek. It's just that his cheek has two colors. It's gray and white. I'm going to put the main form in there that comes off the head in the cheek. Then there's just flowing along that. It's broken into two. So what are these lines here? Those are the squint lines that go with his eye. Notice they also wrap around his head. So all these forms are wrapping around the larger form. Okay, we'll join this top part of his gray fur. And then here's the bottom part of his muzzle. We aim that at the nose. And it all wraps around. Then he's got a lip. And the lip also follows the same curves that the whole face is in. He's got a lower lip here and a lower lip here. And his chin, his jaw. And the last thing you do are the little extra details like the little fur lines. Now all the details make sense. They all follow the basic forms. Last thing, he's got whiskers. So we aim the whiskers. I did the outside ones first. And I can put the middle one in. They all radiate in the same place. Uh, these ones above go up. Start there. One, two, three. He's got wrinkles under his chin. Notice that all the lines are organic. There are no parallel lines anywhere. And there you have it.